What's up, everyone? Episode, what are we on? 17 here? Yeah, episode 17. Welcome, Half the Story Podcast. We're back off a little bit of layoff over the holiday weekend. Much to talk about, much to talk about. Um, had this juicy episode brewing for a while. Got this juicy tangerine sour. And just as I'm about to click play, I spilt it. And uh, sour beer never dries up so quickly and it sticks to the floor so my feet are all sticky so shout out to sour sour beer and uh this juicy episode but we're back we're back better than ever episode 17 here we're cruising up to episode 20 here so what's been up hopefully you guys had a great fourth of july uh if you don't know fourth of july is my birthday i turned the old 29 looking fine at 29 and uh so now a year older, a year wiser, as they say, and uh, definitely don't feel it. I just feel older, mostly. Um, my hips and my shoulders feel older, you know, still doing the, the CrossFit and everything like that. Because we just got done with CrossFit tonight. Um, still kind of doing that intermittently throughout the week, maybe three times a week. Um, sprinkling that in, but uh, yeah, uh, everything's been going good. I had a good birthday. Shout out to... Uh, Andrew Dostal and Kimberly Brewer for coming out to Portland. Our first guests out in Portland since we moved here. Well, my sister came out to Portland kind of right as we moved here. But first real guests hosting at our place here in Portland. And it was a doozy. So uh, let's get into it. So ever since we moved here, we've had this backpacking trip kind of planned different backpacking trip but we wanted to do something over kind of the fourth of july a little bit before the fourth um between me and christy's birthday go on a backpacking trip we've never done a backpacking trip so uh we move here we've got some shitty sleeping bags and a tent that's about all we have so we're we're pretty well prepared for like a three-day backpacking trip so we've got the tent we've got the sleeping bags um and then we realized we're not prepared at all um we go out buy all the the gear that we need um makes a big dent in the wallet as they say um camping gear backpacking gear is inexpensive but hopefully it's only most of that stuff is a one-time purchase um so we get all the backpacking gear we got friends flying in like i said andrew and kimberly are flying in we're going to be doing the timberline trail and if you haven't been to portland portland mount hood kind of overlooks portland and portland overlooks mount hood either way it's the mountain that's pretty much the closest to um portland and it's beautiful you get to look at it when you drive through portland you get to see it on the bridges downtown you can see it when the sky is clear um, it's just a majestic uh pointy rock in the sky that's huge with snow on it um, so mount hood um, Timberline Trail at the top, I believe, is where part of The Shining was filmed. I uh, still haven't seen that movie in its entirety, but apparently the movie was filmed there. So, Timberline Lodge, Mount Hood. We're doing this backpacking trip. It's going to be a three-day trip. Buddy uh, Dossel and his girlfriend um, fly in, and the next day we go on this trip. So, long story short, we make it. We get all our gear. We're ready to go. We're... Our bags are freaking um, loaded to the bristle, you know, just nice and heavy because we've never backpacked before. I mean, I'm just, I brought the kitchen sink in the backpack. You know, I brought extra tam not tampons, but brought extra wipes. You know, I brought extra, you know, foot stuff for my blisters, like creams and moisturizers and all that extra stuff that you don't think you that you think you need but you don't really need um so we got our our packs and our poles and we're ready to do this backpacking trip so we leave uh so we decided to do the timberline trail uh, so you start at the timberline lodge um it's on mount hood like i said famous lodge kind of here around, around the area and then you walk all the way around the mountain and you do walk a lot um around a whole mountain and this mountain mount hood is not really the biggest mountain in the world but it's still a legit mountain you know it's called mount hood so um the name precedes itself um so yeah we set off on our adventure what was it 
Sunday morning at around 11 a.m. Get to the lodge, take our last pee break, poop break, and toilets, and then we start walking. And it's a good four. Well, let's let's round it back. Anywhere we kind of looked up, it was 38 to 45 miles of a trip. You know, everywhere you look, it says something different, but the consensus was it was between 38 and 45 miles, which can kind of mess with your head a little bit. So we leave the lodge 11 a.m. on a Sunday, start walking. We got the gear, we've got the bags. We're looking like the kid um, and up the Boy Scout kid with all his gear ready and like the sticks and like walking with the sticks and like, uh, better get out the sticks because our hands are like getting a little like puffy because we're not using the muscles in our hands. So we get out the sticks like half an hour in and we're like, dude, this is pretty cool. Like it's pretty hot, but it's like there's snow on the ground at some places and there's like rocks and there's like cliffs and like you can like, we're walking around a mountain like we can't turn back now. We can't turn back. Definitely can't turn back. There's like 38 to 46 miles. You can't turn back. So we're walking, walking, walking. And most of the trip we're walking because it's a hike. Um, so for three days we're walking and uh, this is our first backpacking experience. So uh, definitely a lot of fun. Uh, definitely a lot of walking. Backpacking is definitely something uh, we want to keep trying. But uh, the Timberline Trail is a lot of fun with some sketchy river crossings. And prior to this, we kind of watched a documentary on YouTube where this guy like filmed himself walking the whole thing but it was only an hour long when it took him like three days to do it so he was like these river crossings are so dangerous and it was like a little puddle that he stepped over and we're like man that's lame but uh legit some legit river crossings a lot of snow on on the uh north side of the mountain the north uh what was it the north yeah northeast side um uh, man it was a lot of fun doing that hike and uh Thank God we had some experienced uh, backpackers with us um, to do that hike with Andrew and Kimberly and uh, learned a lot on that backpacking trip. Definitely, if you've never done a backpacking trip, and I've only done one in my life, so I can't really talk, but uh, if you've never pooped in an out, out, if you've never pooped outside and literally lived out of a backpack for, a, I mean, even if it's just a night or two nights, um, it's definitely a crazy experience um, and something that I think we'll probably do more of. Um, it was cool. A little weird not showering and like just everything you had was on your back. And it was, it was very different and very weird, but also pretty cool because you didn't have self-service. And like we left July 1st, the first day of NBA free agency. And I was like... You know, I'm die hard, you know, knee deep in uh, NBA free agency right now. And uh, so that was a little tough, but was able to get a uh, cell reception and kind of see the Kevin Durant leaving. And then Kawhi watch was obviously riveting for like five or six days. But uh, yeah, that was, uh, it was kind of cool not being on the phone for a while, but it was also like, NBA free agency and I want to see who goes where, where Kevin Durant's going. So, uh, the trail was a lot of fun. Definitely want to try it again. We ended up completing it in two nights. What was it? Six hours or something like that. So it didn't take us nearly three days. Um, this first night we kind of camped by these, like this Creek with these rocks wasn't really ideal. Um, and then the second night we camped at, camp cloud or something like that which is an actual campsite which was nice so we lit up a fire and probably 10 15 20 minutes after we got there it started hailing and storming and i was actually the night that uh the portland area around it actually had one of their tornadoes which was like i don't know the fifth ever or something like that so um it hailed for a few minutes but uh, uh so we just hung out in the tent and had our like like boiled our pot and water and our jet boil and like made a hot meal and like sealed it up and just like let it sit there for 25 minutes. Cause we got those like, uh, those hot water meals that you pour water in and let them sit and mine were good. So I was feeling good about that. Shout out to backpackers, cunt backpackers pantry. Um, pretty good. The fettuccine is very good, but, uh, yeah, it was kind of cool 
you know, sleeping in a tent and we were, man, by the time you got the tent set up, like, like when you were walking and stuff, you're like, all right, let's try and make it to, um, wherever we're making it to, wherever we put on the map that we're going to make it to. And like, as soon as you started like crawling and like walking to it and you're like, oh man, I'm at least like less than a mile. Your body starts like shutting down a little bit. Cause you know, you're getting close to your body's like, man, I'm only going to let you get to the campsite. That's all I'm going to let you do. I know your legs hurt, but, uh, this is the campsite we're sleeping at. So I'm shutting down. Like I'm powering down right now. So like, by the time you get to the campsite, you're like, Oh, Oh God. Oh God. Thank God. And like, then you have to set up all your stuff. So you got to get your tent out, your sleeping bags out. You got to get your food made, your dinner made, blow up your little air mattresses, like get everything situated, like organize all your stuff, which is a whole nother like 30 minute process, 40 minute process of getting everything ready. And you're just hungry and like your legs are throbbing. You got like a blister that's like, um, on your foot. And, uh, but yeah, it's kind of a beast when you get to camp, but your body just kind of is once you it's weird how once you know the end is near your body uh, like just starts shutting down a little bit like okay we're getting close it's time your body's just like "Uh uh-huh we're getting close it's time to uh start shutting down like don't be playing like because i'm powering down it better be close so yeah we slept uh slept very good in the tent on the pads and stuff like that First night it was a little warm. Second night it was a little cold. Like I said, it hailed a little bit and it was kind of windy up there. Um, and then we woke up the second or the what was it the third day, the final day, at that campsite to some like guy and his wife that like managed the campsite or whatever, and uh, they were telling us that this guy was coming to cut down these trees by our campsite, so we had to like leave. So luckily we were already up like getting everything away, but. Got to watch some trees fall, so that was kind of cool. Um, definitely make noise if you were wondering if a tree falls. Um, so yeah, we backpacked that. A um, lot of ice, a lot of sludgy, mudgy, uh, but very pretty. A lot of cool views, and definitely ten out of ten would recommend. Want to try it again? Try and get it done in one night, maybe in the future, once we get our stamina up. As Donald Trump would say, uh, working on our stamina, but we're there. We're close. I mean, we were only the third day we hiked six hours. So, um, it was a beast though, but a lot of fun. And it was kind of funny because like the last day was actually the last day was probably the worst. Cause we were like up on the east side of the mountain. Like it was a lot of snowy, like a lot, we were pretty high up. It was like snowy, windy, or it wasn't snowing, but it was like windy and wet and there's just a bunch of like snow bridges you had to cross. And then we lost the trail for a little bit. Then we found it. And then you were just up for so long. And then we were drinking like our water from the streams and stuff with like the purifying tablets, which made the water taste okay at best. You know, some water was better than the others, but definitely iodine flavored, which kind of just everything smells iodine y that comes out of your body afterwards. And then, uh, uh, where was it going? Yeah, so the last day, it was just like kind of kind of a sucky day to start because it was just up in the mountains, like cold, like not cold, but going through like ice bridges and stuff. And then just a lot of walking and you're just like, man, I'm so ready to be done, even though like you're not ready to be done because it's still kind of fun at the time. But at the time you hate it too. And then you have to like, we had a couple of difficult river crossings the last day and uh saw some horse poop and then then like the last maybe the last mile or so was all like uphill back to the lodge and then it started like raining like spitting out rain and it was like cold and we were all just like man screw this and we were just like walking in sand like slow and like uh, like walking really like slow and just waiting to be done and then i was talking to everyone i was like man i bet like I can't wait till we like get close to the lodge and like, we're going to hear children laughing and stuff like that and playing. And like, we're like so used to not seeing anybody because we only saw like a few people on the trail. Like it's going to be like walking back, like in the walking dead where they finally find a home and like there's children laughing and playing and like we're back to civilization. There's like a cozy, like lodge chair for us to sit on and 
bathrooms and more fresh water. And like we were walking back and like, sure enough, kept come walking over this little hill, children's laughter, full on children's laughter. And I was like, yes, thank God. So that was pretty funny that uh, definitely called the children laughter. Um, definitely lifted the spirits for the last like quarter mile. And then you just, you're kind of walking. It was super foggy the last mile. So you couldn't see the lodge or anything. So it was like walking in the mist and then like you just kept walking and like inch by inch, you could kind of see the outline of the lodge. And then that was like, Ooh. and then like you could see the lodge and you're like, yeah, yeah. And then we got in the lodge and like everyone was like on their iPads, like, by a fire cozy fire like wearing their patagonias like and like eyeglasses and stuff like that and like looking at us because we smelled like um straight like mountain rats and uh hadn't showered in like three days but it was definitely a really good feeling getting done and probably one of the top seven or eight feelings i've had in my life i mean wasn't it wasn't uh it was definitely sucky and hard but uh looking back it was a lot more fun um when i look back on it than when than while we were doing it but uh i think you the whole reason you do it is for that moment at the very end where you're like yes i did it and like i can finally like get a cheeseburger with like two handful of tater tots which we did um like on the way home we can like eat whatever we want because we've literally been like eating nuts and like beef jerky which is good and like um water meals and stuff like that so definitely that feeling was almost worth the whole trip of being done and getting in the car and like taking your shoes off and knowing that you're gonna like sleep in your own bed that night and like get some good food in you so i think that feeling will will be back and i think we're gonna try to do some at least some overnight backpacking trips here coming up um coming up soon so i mean we got all the gear we spent an arm and a leg on it so we might as well do it so so that was our trip around the timberline trail um very short and sweet but uh a lot of fun um and uh ended up being i think 48 point whatever miles so definitely longer than the book said definitely longer than the map said the map said like 38 but that was bullshit so um but like i said looking back on it it was a lot of fun even though during it it sucked it's just one of those things that um kind of you look back in time and think like if you've ever detasseled before which i talked about in my last one or two podcasts ago about detasseling a little bit you know it sucked while you're doing it but for me at least having all the friends there and um talking crap and having food fights on the bus when you look back you think about how much fun it was but during it it was just like torture but it's just one of those things um so uh yeah so then uh, got done with the timberline trail had a cheeseburger and like at least 50 or 60 tater tots that were well cooked and uh enjoyed ourselves that night took a shower had a couple beers um and then we ended up having a couple days so we hung out in the city a day uh, made some good food went to the coast did all that stuff and then this little two-day weekend and now we're back and at the work week but i do have some exciting news um maybe not to you guys but uh definitely uh exciting to me and to christy is that uh we or i am actually moving or transferring my job closer to where we live so right now i am on the east southeast side of portland and i work in the westernmost suburb of portland and hillsboro so every day i have to drive all the way across portland through the traffic through the city um through the tunnel through the bridge everything like that over the rainbow and all the way through portland through beaverton and then through hillsborough to get to work and on the way back i have to literally fight off hordes of traffic um to get home through rush hour traffic so long story short i took a position closer to our current residence um which i'll start probably in the next month or two or month month and a half i should say 30 days ish and uh so that's gonna be a lot closer it's gonna be a lot better um, in terms of, uh, commuting, at least, um, different population of people right now where I'm at a skilled facility. Um, there's a lot of, I mean, it's your traditional skill that's hip replacements. It's, 
um, falls, it's ortho, it's neuro, strokes. Um, but this new place I'm going to um, is kind of in the northeast section of Portland. So it's a lot of homeless, it's a lot of substance abuse, a lot of addiction, a lot of mental health. Uh, and I think they actually have a, a wing of the facility that is all trach, so tracheotomies where there's a tube in your throat there. Um, so it's going to be definitely a different experience, definitely going to learn a lot there, definitely going to miss everyone at Hillsboro because um, I'm just six months into it, but uh, I finally feel like I'm comfortable there and, you know, I love my coworkers and everyone there, but uh, it's just too much of a beast to be commuting there every day. Um, I mean, it's about two hours a day, at least in traffic, if not more, so... Should be able to uh, cut some time out of my day. Hopefully, maybe that will motivate me to do a few more podcasts. Maybe motivate me to do some other things here and there. Um, so that's exciting for me, at least. Uh, um, what else? Oh, when uh, we had our friends here, we went to a open mic here in Portland. And it was at this kind of dark little hole in the wall. I don't even remember what it was called. But it was anybody could do it. So anybody could go up and do stand up. All you had to do is show up by seven. And I did not go up, um, just so you know. Um, but we went, it's free. I think everybody was up there maybe three minutes, maybe five minutes. I think it was three minutes um, and did their set. Very interesting uh, crowd of people at this open mic. You know, you had people with lots of mental health issues. Uh, people that just wanted to get up there and yell and rant and rave and um, kind of vent. Uh, then you had some people that were actually really funny and then some people that uh, weren't very funny as well. So very interesting uh, just looking at it from the people and the energy from each person coming up because it was like boom, 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 boom. You know, three minutes, next comment, three minutes, next comment. And it was about a two and a half, three hour show. So. I mean, you got a bunch of people going in and out, and it was just interesting seeing all the people and um, people trying comedy and new at comedy and trying stuff and telling dead baby jokes and then other people talking about the government and stuff like that. Um, definitely a Portland crowd um, in terms of comics, a lot of um, a lot of Portland people, which is good. I love that because. Um, you know, some of the jokes were kind of um, risque, I should say, like the ba the dead baby jokes, which are pretty risque. But um, I also think it's kind of cool that everyone there is comfortable doing what they what they want to talk about. You know, it's uh, that's what makes this country great is that you can say whatever you want. You know, you can tweet at the president that he's a blank, 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 and you won't get killed. You know, in other countries, if you were to tweet at the leader or whatever like that if you were to say something about the government you end up dead so um that's one of the the things i love about the country you know i don't always have to agree with anything but i love that people can say what they want and uh sticks and stones may break your bones but words will never hurt you and it's just comedy so um definitely kind of maybe not inspired me but maybe one day i'll go up there and try three minutes of something um I don't know. We'll see. It would be kind of fun to just try it, you know, and I'd probably fall flat on my face. But one day, maybe we'll try it. We'll give it a try. If I do, I'll let you guys know and let you guys know how it went. But uh, shout out to that place. I'd like to go back again some Wednesday and watch it. It was a lot of fun. It was kind of awkward, but it was kind of fun. Definitely a weird crowd, but uh, definitely a lot of fun as well, though. So, uh, yeah, first open micer type experience. Um, so a lot of fun. Uh, what else? What else? So NBA. Yeah. Talking about the NBA free agency. So like I said, when we went on the trip was the first day of free agency opened up, you know, wheeling and dealing all the NBA players are moving and shout out um, to the NBA. It's going to be a crazy season. And actually just a couple hours ago, Russell Westbrook, Westbrook or Westbrook um, got traded to Houston Rockets. So now Dude, I am so excited for the NBA season, probably more than the NFL season. Until the NFL season gets here, then I'll be more excited. Um, but uh, I am super jacked up and hyped up for this year's NBA season, especially when that I live in a town where I can go see some of these 
players and some of these teams compete against our team, which is really good. Portland Trail Blazers, our team, you know, since I've lived here six months, I've adopted it. Um, but uh, yeah, so there's just, there's so many good teams now. It's kind of anybody's race. You know, everyone's got two stars. The balance is kind of evened out now that the uh, Warriors um, Beatles band broke up. Um, so I'm very excited. I think Portland has a good chance to uh, make it another good run. I don't think they'll make it to the Western Conference Finals, um, but they do have a solid team coming back. They had an addition of Hassan Whiteside at center. Um, so we'll see. I'm excited. I want to go to a lot of Portland games, uh, Trailblazers games this year, kind of see uh, what's popping in the NBA. I want to definitely want to see LeBron when he's in town. Definitely want to see... Uh, who else do I want to see? Maybe the Clippers and Kawhi, you know. And uh, yeah, I want to see a lot of a lot of NBA games this year, so I'm excited about that. Um, so what else has been going on? Oh yeah, so I went to so my fiance Christie's in this uh, flag football league every Wednesday, and uh, uh, so I went to her game yesterday, you know, to support because I haven't been to the one yet. And so I went there and watched it and uh, we were sitting there and, or I was sitting there in the stands by myself and this other, like the next wave of teams was coming and like warming up in the state, like getting their shoes on and stuff in the stadiums and stuff like that. And it's a co-ed like uh, flag football team, like league. So boys and girls play. And like one of the girls like was sitting like a couple rows ahead of me talking to another girl and she's like, I missed my uh, my friend's potluck tonight to come to this. And I was like, "Oh, cool potluck!" Like I didn't. I was obviously just eavesdropping, um, like on my phone, pretending not to listen. She's like, "Yeah, I missed my potluck tonight, or my friend's potluck tonight. It was a goal setting potluck." And I like I started laughing a little bit in my mind, and it's probably rude to say, but uh, and she's like, "I don't get why." I have to go to the, I have to go to a potluck and tell everyone my goals. Like, I just want to tell myself those goals. And it was funny. Uh, definitely not as funny to you guys, but very something Portland, uh, which I love is that, uh, people have goal setting potlucks where you go and share your goals and shout out to those people that do do that because, you know, get your goals out there. You know, it's, it's funny to make fun of. Um, but also, I think when you get your goals out there, it kind of leads you to, uh, you know, when someone knows that you're after something, maybe they can hold you a little bit accountable to it. But uh, damn, whoever thought of a goal setting potluck, um, shout out to you because that's funny for one and that's genius, but it's more funny than anything. And I'll probably make fun of you if you ever invite me to that ever. So <clears throat> goal setting potlucks, I'm going to try to somehow turn that into a bit. If I ever do stand up for three minutes at open mic. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, um, about it works going good, you know, getting in the flow. Like I said, I got a new, uh, new spot coming up here closer in town and, uh, backpacking has been good, man. We're excited. Uh, Christie's family's coming in, uh, actually two, exactly two weeks from right now. They'll be on a plane, um, headed to Portland. I'm super jacked up about that, but, um, yeah, hosting, hosting is a beast, you know, hosting uh, friends is a beast, but uh, had a lot of fun. I'm um, excited to host family next and uh, get out in the city, get out in the uh, woods and um, show them around town. So uh, what else did I want to say? Um, yeah, everything's going good right now. Uh, uh, I think I'm going to leave you guys with that. So. Um, shout out to goal setting potlucks. If you're interested, we're going to have one here next Friday. I'm just kidding. And, uh, uh, shout out to the Timberline trail, Andrew and Kimberly for, and they were freaking just hauling. Like, I don't even think they broke a sweat, even though they said it was hard, but I mean, those people can hike and bike and fight probably too. Um, so shout out to them for coming out, taking us on our first backpacking trip. It was a lot of fun. Can't wait to take someone on their first backpacking trip here, uh, whenever that opportunity arises. And, um, uh, thinking this weekend, we're going to head down South to, um, Oregon, the Southern part of Oregon and, uh, go to bend. Maybe, um, uh, maybe see some dessert. Um, 
some desert parts of Oregon and maybe just chill. So, um, Maybe next week I'll talk about Walt's vet wet. Uh, I'll talk about Walter's vet visit where he got his uh, booty hole checked. So <laughs> we'll see about that. Well, that's pretty much the whole story. And uh, you, we heard him crying from like three doors down. Not crying, but you know, you would imagine what a pug sounds like when he gets his booty hole checked. So um, that was pretty funny. But he was kind of mortified by it. But that's actually the whole story. So. I'll save it for this one. Uh, but uh, uh, that's all I got for you guys. Thank you. Uh, all, as always, if you can hit that subscribe button on YouTube, uh, I'm more um, social on Instagram, uh, Facebook. I don't really use the Twitter, but I have one. Um, SoundCloud, iTunes, it'll be out. Um, other than that, guys, that's all I got for you today. Episode, what are we on? 17, 18? I think we're on 18 right now. 18 is a wrap, guys. I'll see you when I see you next. Hopefully, I can get one out, uh, busted out uh, this coming week. But enjoy your weekend. Shout out to Bend, Oregon. I'm going to be there probably this weekend. So take care, guys. I'll see you when I see you next. I'm out.